This year is a big one for local basketball as Gabba celebrates its 60th anniversary. On the 6th of May 1964, a meeting was held in the newly built John McIntosh Hall. Less than an hour later, the Gibraltar Amateur Basketball Association was founded. Now, this wasn't a decision made on a whim. Demand was sky high. In fact, no fewer than 34 teams registered for the very first competition held. And it wasn't just the men. Women's basketball was swiftly introduced the following year. Remember, it was in the mid-60s that England became world champions in football. Muhammad Ali ruled the roost in boxing. The first ever Super Bowl was held in L.A. While here at home, what would grow into one of the biggest and best-run associations on the rock was born. Since its admission, Gibraltar has participated regularly in official FIBA competitions for men and women at senior, under-18 and 16 levels. Its men's and women's teams have also participated in the Island Games since 1999, winning five silver and four bronze medals. Current president John Gonsalves was a vice president of FIBA Europe from 2010 to 2014. A big name on the big stage. He spoke to us about some of the key moments throughout the journey. My memories are very vivid. It, it was the thing at the time for weeks to, to play basketball and there was a, a group of uh, people who, who had played, uh, locals, but who played um, in the military leagues because there was some military basketball going on for a long time here before GABA was founded. And they called this meeting, uh, if there was interest, to form a, uh, an association. We are great at forming committees here. And uh, that's how basketball started. And there was no room in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the... The room called for the meeting. It was packed, absolutely packed. And at the end of the day, 34 teams registered for the first league competition. And tell us about that, that, that league competition, where it was held, who won it? Yes, uh, one of the factors, one of the important factors behind the formation of, of uh, GABA was that the Macintosh Hall, recently built, recently like weeks before, was opened, uh, had a, a basketball gymnasium. A basketball gymnasium which was about half the size of a normal court. It was so small, but we didn't know anything else or anything better. In actual fact, you had the baskets uh, flat played, against the Played wall. five aside or? Huh? As in a smaller court with, with, the, with the regular amount of players per? Yeah, regular amount of players and um, uh, the baskets were flashing against the wall, which was very dangerous because people come in and they plaster themselves against the wall. The first league competition uh, was held. There were uh, preliminary games to, to decide who would play first division, who would play second division, and also a junior division because there were young teams. And the first winners were the police, the Gibraltar police. They went royal at the time and uh, they had a, a head start on all of us because they w had been playing in, in, the, in the military competitions for some time. So they had a head start um, and they won. They won that competition, yeah. And so the association and the sport on the rock began with a bang and then the women were swiftly introduced just a year later. A year later, um, I got very involved because I, um, I wasn't in the committee then. In the first year, I wasn't in the committee. I, I, I was elected the sec for the second year and a lot of young women uh, approached me to say that they liked this game, they've been watching it and they, they would like to, to play. So um, I don't remember quite clearly, but I think we had 10 women's teams to start off with um, and the first competition was held there and the first winners were Blue Stars, coached by yours truly. <laughs> And one of those young women interested in the sport was a certain Carmen Gomez, who yes. at the time, if you tell us the story about her having to juggle duties, if you like. Her worship, as I now call her respectfully, um, was one of the first players, one of the pioneers. And a very good player she was too. And I was proud to, to be her coach. Now, around that time, she also ran a, a television program called Romper Room for young people, which I ran, I think, I'm not sure it was every day of the week, but certainly between 7.30 and 8. And we had a lot of our games at 8.30 in the McIntosh Hall. So, um, because she was very much a, uh, an important player of the team, I used to wait outside uh, Television House in South Barrack Road 
and uh, Carmen would dash out, still dressed in her uh, television garb, and jump in the car, and would rush to the Macintosh Hall, and uh, she was ready to play by the time we, we arrived. We're, we're having to sort of, you know, really sort of skip steps here in the, in the timeline. Um, but then into sort of more recent times, tell us about the growing, the increasing influence that GABA and yourself has had on the international stage. We're talking FIBA Europe now. Uh, ironically, it was uh, the first time we had travelled for uh, an international tournament. We went in, in FIBA or anything of the sort, but um, uh, people in England decided to hold a Commonwealth Basketball Championship, as there was no basketball in the Commonwealth Games. And basketball is very popular uh, throughout the Commonwealth. I mean, they've got big countries like Canada, Australia and New Zealand uh, in the top 15, 16, because New Zealand is there. Because if you just do Canada and Australia, they're certainly in the top eight countries in the world. And they held this tournament in England, Scotland and Wales. And off we went for our first competition. And uh, there, by a sheer coincidence, and I've told this story ad nauseum, um, I met the first Secretary General of FIBA, who was by then Secretary General Emeritus, but a big name in the world of basketball that time. Um, people who follow basketball might remember when the United States lost their first gold medal at the Olympics. They'd won everything until the Russians, yeah. the Soviets, beat them in 1972. Well, this guy was the guy who caused the game to be, not replayed, but the last two seconds of the game to be replayed because the, the guy running the clock had made a mistake, hadn't stopped the clock in time. He didn't like the Americans. And the Soviets, really? and the Soviets won that. But this guy was in a, in a buffet queue. I was behind him and I immediately recognized him even from the back. And he turned around and, and asked me, where are you from? I said, Gibraltar, Can, why aren't you members of FIBA? I said, well, I didn't realize that we could. I thought it was only for independent countries. Oh, no, no, no. Countries with sports independence, not countries with political independence. So he, he started talking and then... The rest said, is history. Ah, that's history. History. He asked me to get a big country to sponsor our application. And he said, but don't pick a European country. It's better if you pick somebody from another continent. So we'd, had a, we'd struck up a good relationship with the Canadians. We asked them to do it and they did it willingly. Uh, they they supported us, uh, but it took eight years before, before the Spanish lost their grip on, on things and we became members, ironically, in Barcelona. We were ratified in Spain, so that's uh, how it started. And the uh, uh, involvement in all things FIBA has gone up and up and up. And uh, I mean, you could see the, the people who were here only last week for, for this uh, board meeting of FIBA Europe. Tell us about that. I mean, talk about rubbing shoulders with some of the biggest names in the governing body. This really was a sort of a who's who of... Yes. Um, FIBA has its geographical zones. Uh, obviously, we are in, in Europe, which is the top, top zone. And um, they held uh, their board meeting. There are three board meetings every year. And they held this one in Gibraltar um, on the Sandborn. Everything went fine except for the weather, but they weren't bothered about that. Uh, but if you look at it from the point of view of global sport, other than football, we, we are the number two in, in the world in, in terms of licenses, um, in terms of the competitions that are held, the popularity. And if you look at the Olympic Games, we are above football in, in the Olympic Games. Uh, because football in the Olympic Games is not really a big thing like that. But we are, the, along with athletics, we are the top, the top sport in, in, uh, in, that, in that aspect. As Mr. Gonsalves alluded to, some of FIBA's most significant figures were here on The Rock recently for a meeting of the board of FIBA Europe. In attendance were the likes of FIBA president Sheikh Saud bin Ali Al Thani from Qatar, who will be the hosts of the 2027 World Cup, FIBA Secretary General Andreas Zaklis from Greece, who took over the role in 2018. Fascinating to hear from some of them, and in particular, to learn just how highly they regard our very own president. John, uh, his last name is Gonsalves, but probably his second last name is Basketball. I mean, I know him very well. He's, uh, all his life, he 
put all his effort and his experience and his uh, all what he got for basketball. And, and I perfectly know that it's not difficult to develop basketball in a country, in a specific country as Gibraltar is. But he did his best. I know how many people he introduced to me around basketball in these uh, 24 hours I have been here in, uh, since I arrived. And uh, also we have a very good personal relationship a long time ago uh, because I respect him. Uh, he is a good person and he is a great manager of, of basketball. So as, as Jorge, as president of FIBA Europe, I can ask for more of uh, personal as young. Well, I don't. Uh, I, I will tell you something I was uh, um, recently discussing with some federations and, and they were telling me how the fathers of the federation had a big impact. And, and I said, well, there are not many countries around the world, or any places around the world, many federations where you have an institution so much associated with one person. You know, we, we are uh, in FIBA as well. Uh, you know, I'm the fourth secretary general. Mr. Jones was the founding father of, of the house. And, and in fact, I learned uh, last night that Mr. Jones was the one who said to John Gonsalves some 45 years ago, are you from Gibraltar? And why you're not a member of FIBA yet? Well, look, John, is, is iconic. I mean, he's been with FIBA. I was not even I was not even at FIBA when he was already here, uh, leading the, the small countries, the movement. So he remembers. We had a yesterday great chat about 90s, <laughs> where he still was a player and he was already here. So John is actually uh, uh, one of I would say grandfathers of, of European basketball. He's been he's been involved for for many many years, uh, also in different positions. As a, of course, not only as a board member, he was vice president, he was president of the commissions, etc. So a huge experience. Uh, we still try to learn from him and take the, you know, his memories and take his experience. Uh, and I think we have also some other uh, senior board members. Uh, and it's good to the mixture. Of, we have also some now young generation of board members coming. So this is great mixture. And then back to John. Uh, we just hope that he keeps going and this should be a little bit like kind of celebration not only of the Gibraltar Association but maybe also John's contribution to European basketball. You're not the only person to speak so highly about him. What for you is his biggest strength? I will tell you what is his biggest strength, which is not always easy for some people to handle. He would always say what he thinks. And this is what, for instance, me personally, I appreciate the, the, the most. If there is something which is maybe not good, not accurate, or it could be better, he would go and say in a very polite, nice way, but he would, he would, uh, he would raise the issues. Uh, and this is how we move forward. And, uh, and this is what I personally very much appreciate on, on John's this, this is straightforward uh, and speaking up, even sometimes unpleasant issues. Why? And, and that's the way to, to move and to get better. And this is what we all want. And that's why we are here to, to be better every day. That's all we have time.